At this point, the weakest part of our trophy lodge here in the Hunter Classic is the bird plaques. There's a whole bunch of them we don't even have filled. So today, we're going to set out to try to rectify that at least a little bit here on Vatabois and later on Timbergold Trails. And in the process, we'll be after Bighorn and Alpine Ibex as well. So basically, there were a couple of ways we could have approached a hunt like this. And obviously, we can put ducks on the bird plaques. I want to do a duck hunt eventually, but I wanted to, for this video, at least be able to kind of walk around and hunt multiple things. And there's also that opportunity to maybe add more trophy Ibex and Bighorn to our lodge. This guy's going to fall a little bit short of that kind of trophy classification, but a good looking one to get us going. And if he'll ever, maybe he's just going to stay there. We can make that shot with the 7x64, and that will work to get us going. So I chose Valdebois first because we can pretty well work through the mountains up here and the mountains in the south pretty quickly, and then we'll move on to Timbergold Trails after that. We've got Rock Ptarmigan here on Valdebois and Whitetail Ptarmigan over on Timbergold, and of course the sheep and goat species that we already mentioned. But minus him kind of being stuck there, this is the reason I wanted to hunt in the mountains. We can go after, you know, some of the coolest looking animals in the game. We're not going to trophy shot this, but we will quickly just stand them up here to kind of illustrate the point. I love Alpine Ibex, and we maybe have like two in the lodge. We're basically looking for a 270 plus, and whether or not it happens today, at least we have that opportunity while we look to fill our lodge with some of those birds. And Bighorn, I think the same thing. They're some of my favorite animals to hunt. So I think this is going to be fun in multiple different ways as we hunt for really four species in the mountains of Valdebois and Timbergold Trails. So even though Ibex with the big long curls and massive bighorn are going to be the kind of more impressive things today, these are kind of primarily what we are after. And there was a male rock ptarmigan call, so there should be one down there. But as far as I know, males and females basically can reach the same maximum score so anything in there could be decent size and i think for now for rock ptarmigan we're looking for a 600 plus on these scores so i'm gonna go ahead and equip the 16 gauge and ideally we can get up there because those ptarmigan were kind of like hunkering down so long as we continue running they're gonna stay there until we get right up on top of them and then they'll actually flush and we are essentially at that point so see if we can get up here i think they were a little further up the hill. I should have marked them a little better than I did. Right by this rock would have been it though. So I think that's the smaller one. This is the one I wanted to get because it goes up to 0.7 uh, kilo. Got that. This one coming out of there. That's going to be an awkward shot. We got it. We were way high on that. One of our uh, pellets at the very bottom of the pattern must have hit that. Still never saw a male though. Males are kind of darker in color. Well, we'll see if any of those were decent and maybe we can pick up tracks afterwards. This was the one that looked encouraging. 0. 0.6 kilo, 592. Oh, that is close. I, we'll wait. We won't tax it now. If we don't get anything better than that the rest of the hunt, maybe we'll tax it. I'll have to look at it. Leaderboard is like 620. So I wanted to kind of keep a standard at 600 plus. And we ran into this with the elk skulls as well. 350 is kind of what we were going for. We mounted a bunch of like 345s. I don't really want to do that with Ptarmigan. This one's going to be much smaller at 0 0.5 kilo and 545, but kind of decent starting for the Ptarmigan anyway. And I don't know, we can maybe try to get tracks. It's so tough though. I mean, they can basically be the max weight estimate and nowhere near the size we want. That's a big Ibex. I don't know just how big, but immediately that stands out. Hold on. Ah, he's going to go down over the hill. Are we going to get a spot? We are not. Okay, so a couple of things to note with that Ibex. Number one, the curl was very gradual. It doesn't kind of go very vertical and then loop back down. It's gradual all the way towards the back. And then the other thing was, it was wider set. Now, I'm not saying that's a giant by any stretch. We got to look a little bit closer. It's tough to tell the length of those horns. That was way bigger than a 230, though. I can tell you that for certain. So... He, he, I think, popped into render right when I first saw him, so he's around 300 meters away. We should be good to run to at least 200, and we'll try to get kind of up high, maybe, so we can see him if he's still, you know, not terribly far down below that hill. It gets steep down there. We gotta really be careful not to just spook him, because who knows, he could go up, down. Wait, is that him? 
That is... Hold up. There are two nice Ibex. That's a dark variant. Why that one's running, I have no idea. Uh... Okay. I don't think... Like, that one's not bad. He's not as big. But he's not bad. 225 to 280 for him. I'm convinced this one's way bigger. What's he doing, though? I'm... A little confused, and also because he keeps going underground because he's so far, we can't get a spot. Yeah, 235 to 295. All right, he's stopping. That's doable range if we keep this up right top of the shoulder blade area. We should be able to get him. And now we got to worry about that other one too. That is one very dead Ibex. And then the nice thing too, the weight on the that guy there was encouraging. Weight seems to matter for these species. A lot of your biggest Ibex, Doll Sheep, and Bighorn are all above kind of a certain threshold. Going all the way to the max weight estimate is good. And what <laughs> just happened? Two huge Ibex in the same spot. Man, he looks good though too. The closer we get, nice gradual curl all the way, more than halfway down the spine. Let's see what we're looking at. The Dark Horns are a good sign as well, 102 kilo. Only a 254. So that threshold I was talking about is like 105, 106 kilo. I thought there was a chance when he wasn't above that that we weren't going to quite see as big an Ibex as we wanted. That other one may even outscore him. He's a good one, but not quite what we want in the Trophy Lodge. Also, I'm pretty sure their eyes disappear in the Trophy Shots, which makes it look really odd. Luckily, it's only when he used the Trophy Shot poses, which really didn't work too good in this spot anyway. So let's go ahead and take that photo. Might have spent a little longer setting it up if either A, he scored a little higher, or more importantly B, if we didn't have another good Ibex to go and chase. So, that Dark Fur type is relatively new, and I think we've only got one in the lodge with that fur type. It's like a 254, we mounted it because it was that new fur. If he's bigger than that, we could at least replace that one, we'll see. Man, I'll tell you, he's not bad. He, he may be bigger, I'm, I'm starting to look at that now. Angles are everything with these things. So he's got a longer curl, which is probably good. Yeah, it's not so, you know, vertical as the 236. That's a pretty bad angle. But the 7x64 is really good for these things. It's really flat shooting, which is kind of the primary reason I bring it. And the question is, do we go for that shot or do we wait? I kind of think we can get that to be 100% honest. Even if it's not a perfect shot, it will bring him down. Let's see. Oh, did you know you need ammo? <laughs> okay, luckily, he hasn't gone anywhere. But if we kind of go like base of the neck here. We actually got him in the neck. How far was that? Because I, I thought it was further than it was. That was... Okay, 220 meters. That makes sense. We had a little bit of bullet drop. I thought we were going to get more, but kind of lucked out. We were center of the neck, and actually, I think we're going to be through, like, neck bone, maybe three. We will soon find out. So, uh, really, there's not much to be gained the way he's laying right there. It's not as dark a horns, and there actually is a tiny bit of the score that is determined by the, the horn color. 104 kilo. That's only a 232. Actually, hit him neck bone one, by the way. So how is that? Hold on. I guess the curl doesn't go back as far as it looked. So kind of unfortunate. He really looked a lot bigger in the distance. But I can see why. It, it is a very similar curl to the first one that we shot. So three pretty decent Ibex already. And I think we've kind of covered the northern mountains as much as I wanted to. So I don't know if we can fast travel just yet. But we'll work our way down to the south, and there are more ptarmigan down there. But also, we've had some of our best ibex ever in that area, so we should still be after both. I mean, we are just continuing to find ibex with solid curls. This is another probably like 230s, maybe 240. It's that same deal of like the really vertical curl that actually the last one we shot at, and it just didn't really look like it in a distance. 195, the, hold on a minute though. I had, I don't know what happened on that shot. We didn't quite get straight between the shoulder blades like we wanted. I think he actually died before the second shot got there. I had picked up a max weight Ibex track, probably that one there. 
That's kind of a bummer. And I thought that was the same one until we just spotted it. I will be going up over that hill for sure, but it didn't look much different. It looked like that super vertical curl, but we'll see. Maybe it was just the angle. Like I said, angles are so much of how well you can judge these things. And I'm not complaining. I want to make that clear. I, I said before, I love Ibex. I love like hunting for the really big Ibex, but it would be a hunt where we're here for Ptarmigan, where we're just stumbling into big curl after big curl after big curl. 242 for him. I think that makes him our second biggest. I'm not going to say with any certainty that other one we saw was bigger than him, but I kind of thought it maybe was. I mean, that is as good a view of him as we're going to get. It may be kind of in the same area as that 250. It's not quite as vertical of a, of a curl, but I still don't see it as being an absolute giant. So good estimate, 240 to 295. We'll see what we are looking at here. Got to make that shot before he goes down over that hill. I just don't see that as being a giant by any stretch, but I've shot them before where they don't look all that special and they end up scoring higher than I think, so we will go and see. We still got Ibex going everywhere. I hear Ptarmigan somewhere. I don't see them, but I, I can hear them flying, which is weird because I don't know where. Oh, there we go. Just probably out of range. I don't think we'll launch a shot at that. Can we spot it, though? That's a male. It's in spotting range. I just want to know. Nah, only up to 590. Not one we need to worry about. But even still, this is like, what, our fifth? Good size Ibex? Cannot complain. Oh, hold on. 110 kilo is going to be bigger. 266.9. Why? <laughs> what is different? I told you that weight thing matters. If you get an Ibex that's 110, it's going to be big. Why is that? I'm going to tax it. I mean, that that's a pretty good one. I definitely think that's something we could put on the wall. I don't see the the real difference there. Like, when he was standing broadside, we saw it. We're going to make his eyes disappear for a second. I, I don't know. I don't quite see where he's that much bigger. Like, it is... The horns are longer? I guess it's just that? It certainly isn't extremely obvious, that's for sure. I don't know if I like this or not. So what I did was I tried to frame up these mountains like underneath the curl of the horns. I thought that was kind of cool. We still get some of the background and stuff. When we shoot one up high like this, I try to get as much of the, the mountains and the, the land below as the backdrop. We'll go with it. I don't know. A little bit different than we normally do our trophy shots, but since trophy lodges were released, that's probably one of our top five biggest Ibex anyway. I said 270, and then we talked about Ptarmigan and not lowering the standard, and here we are taxing a 266, but I, I want to put more Ibex in the lodge, and that is one way to do it. We will take opportunities when they arise. Did we just shoot that thing right below the hill? I think that's what just happened. The kind of odd thing about ptarmigan hunting. Oh, is I never even saw it fly over here. Anyway, so often you see them in the distance and you can kind of spot them and know which ones are worth taking out. And I'd rather kind of do it like that, where we can kind of just hunt along and when one flies into range, we can take it out and just sort of see what happens. It feels like we're never going to kill much of anything if we're constantly spotting and looking for those, you know, estimates up to 0.7 kilo and stuff. So that was a little better, at least in terms of getting to take one out, but didn't really work as far as getting a big one. I think that's the lowest scoring one we've had so far. And wouldn't you know it, one more Ibex to go ahead and try to take out. We actually have his track. It was yet another max estimate one. And he's standing over there on the side of the mountain. So the Tarmigan have not been super cooperative, but lots of quality Ibex. He's not huge, I don't think. Yeah, 185 to 240, he'll probably, he may be 220s. But I don't know if we've ever had this many Ibex, just even with like the big curl. Regardless of how big they've been, it's been pretty wild to see that many, you know, even decent ones. So unless a big ptarmigan happens to fly up as we go over here, I think we'll be headed to Timbergold Trails, but we got way more out of Valdeball than I thought we were gonna. And with no ptarmigan in sight, I'd say we are indeed headed for Timbergold Trails. So. Let's quickly see what this guy's going to score. Ended up hitting him spine one, by the way. 
223. So the smallest of the Ibex that we shot, I think we got like, what, two or three Tarbigans, something like that. Not a bad deal. So let's switch maps and we will set out into a brand new set of mountains. So one additional thing, by the way, up here there are Pumas and that is one of the species that you can make skull mounts of. So that'll be another thing to keep an eye on. We do have the e-collar should one show up. But Bighorn and obviously Whitetail Ptarmigan are going to be the primary target. And pretty quickly, we've got a Bighorn Ram out here. So not going to be anything crazy. I think it was maybe like a 140. He is really finding a way to sneak along there. But maybe we can hit him with the 7x64. And if nothing else, it could help to stir things up. The chances of flushing Ptarmigan, maybe getting a Puma on the run, anything like that. I think up here is generally going to be good. Got a bighorn running off there. Couldn't tell what that was. Maybe either a small ram or a U, I think. It's still running around there. I can't it looks like a small ram, actually. And of course, the one that we shot actually slid way down the hill. There's a track there that maybe can help us identify the other one, but gotta think, like I said, maybe 140s for this guy, something like that. Double long him at 100 meters. 143 indeed. And then is this track going to be from him or that other one? It disappeared, so that's from him. But if we can uh, find a track or even just spot that one just to know, that would be nice. The ability of these Pumas to sneak in is insane. I don't know how he got through that wide open spot, but we had a call. That is a male, I can tell by the size of the head, which is pretty much what we're looking for. And then I don't know, did he... Oh, there we go. I thought he, like, fell back down. That looks like an okay one. Let's see what we are dealing with. Up to 105 kilo, which is the max. See if we can go ahead and pop him before he disappears again. Because it happens a lot. Oh, okay. <laughs> he, like, turned a tiny bit to his right right when we pulled the trigger, but got him down. I think it actually ended up being a lung hit. And, uh, immediately... I don't even know where that thing was, but we were able to pick it up. Immediately... Having that collar prove valuable. We got a call over there, sat here for five minutes, and got at least a, a potential Lodge Edition. It's hard to tell with low spotting. Because frankly, I think 70 to 105 kilo basically leaves him room to be anywhere in that realm. He is, though, 83 kilo, so kind of average, I would say. Lung and liver shot at 68 meters, 15. We, I think, 15.8, probably would be reasonable for a skull mount, maybe 15.7 if we really wanted to fill some spots. It's a good one, 143 GM, I think 144 because it rounds up just for shooting that. We'll take that any day, but not a skull mount we want to do. We might have something here, like look at the size difference between that ptarmigan and the others, and these, these two up here as well. I, I can't... 415 to 480 is a good one. I don't know if we can spot that down there. I'm not sure what we're going to do, because I think a couple of those are solid. I guess we'll try to get this one here, because it's going to fly underneath us. No idea which it is. We got it. But, uh, <laughs> now we have a problem. So what Tarmigan kind of do is they fly around, and then they'll try to sort of relocate back to where they were. So I think... By marking that area, they should ultimately end up back there. But let's go see which one we got, because I, I have no idea. It kind of looks okay sized here. It is 0.4 kilo, 432. Like, that's a quality whitetail ptarmigan. Again, we'll wait, because there were there were so many decent looking ones in there. I, I think we ought to at least try to get something out of that flock again. But I'm pretty sure 432 would be, you know, bottom of the leaderboard like... 600-ish would be for Rock Tarmigan. I think we found the flock at least. That's that one up to 480. And then what's the one beside it? Before we just go make any crazy decisions? Because I kind of think we might... Wait, they're both up to 480? Hmm. This is interesting. So, I was a little bit off. 432 is, is a good Whitetail Tarmigan, but... We're probably looking for 440 or 450 if we really want a decent one for the lodge. Those two that have those high estimates, they got a good shot at being there, but I'd kind of rather at least put ourselves in position to get both. The thing about that is, 
For one, it's no guarantee we actually can pick out the right birds, you know, once they're in the air. The other one is, it's always possible they just start to fly again. They don't just sit there till they get spooked. They will just kind of fly around. So if by chance this would be one of them, that is up to 480. I think we pop it on the ground there with the shotgun and just try to pick one out of the air when they go. So, little lag there as we shoot into the ground. And then they'll take a second to kind of flush up, but they should at least, unless they maybe knew we were here. In that case, there's a chance some just sat there. I saw one run. Oh, that was close. That one just sat there for a second. I mean, I don't know where they all went though. Maybe they did just get out of here. Let's at least see what this one was and go from there. This is another 0.4 kilo. 424, actually smaller than the last. So maybe we didn't do such a bad job by shooting that one when it flew by. We know there's some other kind of decent ones somewhere around. I'm not really sure where they got to, but we are able to find them once just by listening for the kind of chattering sounds they make. We can probably do it again. I couldn't spot that one, and probably I should have, but it's been kind of annoying to chase things thing, these things around. And I have no idea where the main flock got to, but when it flew by, I think that might be a male. I know there was a male that had gotten away. Uh, that was a female, 365, that was not at all worth it, but it seems like the flock just kind of disappeared. Well, sad to say, we could not relocate that flock of ptarmigan, and maybe there was one in there big enough to put in the lodge, maybe not, it's hard to say. But frankly, I decided not to tax either the decent ptarmigan we shot, the rock ptarmigan, or the whitetail ptarmigan. We've got a couple in the lodge bigger than those already, and I just don't want to dilute the standards. But, we do have a new Ibex to place in here, so let's go and do that. So just for instance, we've got like this rock ptarmigan in here, which I'm having a heck of a time getting to actually show up. It's 627 score from all the way back in 2018. And we've got a white tail ptarmigan here. This is a 426. It's the smallest we have in the lodge, also from 2018. But just on the other side, a little bit of a better one, 443. So lowering the standards to the size of the ones we got today, I just don't think is going to be beneficial for the lodge in the end. Hopefully we can spend more time going after them. I really enjoyed the Ibex and Bighorn half of that hunt. And then obviously going for a duck hunt at some stage is something that's going to have to happen. But the new addition are 266 scoring Ibex. Much better look than the, I think, 251 that we had here before. And always nice to add to this lodge and getting to come back and take a look at it. But I think on that note, that's going to do it for this video. So as always, thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you next time.